The sun as it stands is approximately 93 million miles away from planet Earth. Yet the heat waves that we experience at times or the heat of the summer months in general can at times be quite unbearable. Rather, on some places on Earth the heat can become so intense that such areas of the world can become almost uninhabitable. This is with regards to the heat of the sun as we know it today. As for the heat of the sun on the day of judgment, the matter will be altogether different. Imam Muslim narrates on the authority of Al-Miqdad that the Messenger وسلم, said, تدن الشمس يوم القيامة من الخلق حتى تكون منهم كمقدار ميل فيكون الناس على قدر أعمالهم في العرق He says the sun on the day of judgment will be brought so close to people on the day of standing so much so that the distance between it and the heads of man will be one mile not 93 million miles one mile, he said. He said, therefore, people will be submerged in their sweat according to the levels of their deeds today. He says, منهم من يكون إلى كعبيه ومنهم من يكون إلى ركبتيه ومنهم من يكون إلى حقويه ومنهم من يلجمهم العرق الجامع وأشار رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بيده إلى فيه he says, therefore, some people on the Day of Judgment, their sweat will reach up to their ankles, other people up to their knees, other people up to their waists, and other people, it will be up to their throats, completely submerging them in sweat. And the Messenger وسلم, when saying this, he pointed to his mouth. Amidst these horrific and harrowing happenings on the Day of Judgment that will be unfolding one after the other, Amidst the unfathomable heat, horrible scenes that you see around you, stress that has never been experienced like this day before, children who are going gray, women who are dropping their loads, and people who are ignoring their mothers and fathers and friends, amidst all of this unimaginable stress, there will be a select group of Muslims who will be invited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to step aside because he is about to shade them with his shade. Surely this is the station of the prophets and messengers, I hear you say. Yes, this is the status of the prophets and messengers, but it is not exclusive to them. And for those who are interested, they can begin reserving for themselves places today in that shade, starting from today. Who are these people who will be shaded? In the shade of Allah on a day when there will be no shade but His, this will be the template for the khutbah today. In the famous hadith, which Imam al-Bukhari al-Muslim narrate on the authority of Abu Hurairah, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Memorize these seven. سَبْعَةٌ يُظِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظِلِّهِ يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّهُ There will be seven categories of people on the Day of Judgment who will be shaded by the shade of Allah on a day where there will be no shade but His. Ya Allah. Who are they? He says, Al-Imam Al-Adil. وَشَابٌ نَشَأَ بِعِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ وَرَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ وَرَجُلَانِ تَحَابَّا فِي اللَّهِ إِجِ تَمَعَا عَلَيْهِ وَتَفَرَّقَا عَلَيْهِ ورجل دعته امرأة ذات منصب وجمال فقال إني أخاف الله ورجل تصدق بصدقة فأخفاها حتى لا تعلم شماله ما تنفق يمينه ورجل ذكر الله خاليا ففاضت عيناه 
the first of the seven who will be shaded is an imam, a leader who is just. Number two, a young man who grew up in the worship of Allah. Number three, he says, a person whose heart is hung to the masajid. Number four, two people who loved each other purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number five, a man who was invited by a woman. She was seducing him to do haram, but he walked away from the haram saying, I fear Allah. Number six, a man who gives a charity with so much privacy and sincerity that his left hand has no idea what his right is giving. And number seven, a person who remembers Allah Almighty when he is alone and his eyes begin spilling with tears. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah that we have been blessed with such a hadith. Alhamdulillah that this position on the day of standing is not exclusive to the martyrs, not exclusive to the prophets and messengers. Alhamdulillah. Yes, there will be a shade, a real shade on the day of judgment. You may ask, but where from? There are no mountains on the day of judgment. There are no objects. There are no cliffs. There are no walls or trees. No, this is a real shade. But where does it come from? Sa'id ibn Mansur narrates in his sunan on the authority of the companion Salman that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam adds and says, Allah will shade them using the shade of his throne. Alhamdulillah that such an opportunity exists. And that is why Imam ibn Abdul Barr, he would say in his tamheed, speaking about this hadith that you just heard, he would say, وَهَذَا أَحْسَنُ حَدِيثٍ يُرْوَى فِي فَضَائِلِ الْأَعْمَالِ وَأَعَمُّهَا وَأَصَحُّهَا إِن شَاءَ اللَّهِ وَحَسْبُكَ بِهِ فَضْلًا لِأَنَّ الْعِلْمَ مُحِيطٌ بِأَنَّ مَنْ كَانَ فِي ظِلِّ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ لَمْ يَنَلْهُ حَوْلَ الْمَوْقِفِ he says, this hadith that you just heard is the greatest hadith that we have with regards to the virtuous acts of worship and the most general and the most authentic, insha'Allah. He says, and its virtue should be enough for you because it is well known, he says, because it is well known that whoever is in the shade of Allah on the day of judgment means that he will be spared from every harm on that day. A hadith of such greatness, such magnitude deserves time, deserves attention. And our mashayikh and ulama have given it much attention. Imam Ibn Taymiyyah has a huge article on this hadith. Imam Al-Sakhawi has a book on this hadith. Imam Ibn Hajar Al-Asqalani has a book on this hadith. And many others from our contemporaries, they have dedicated volumes just speaking about these seven and others who will be shaded. So let us give it some of our attention as well. Category number one. Al-Imam Al-Adil, the just Imam. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Does that mean that we have missed out on number one because we are not presidents? We are not MPs, we are not parliamentarians or governors. We have not, we don't have this type of authority. A just Imam, a just leader. Ibn Hajar Al-Asqalani says otherwise. It is open. He says in his Fatḥ al-Bari, وَيَلْحَقُ بِهِ كُلُّ مَنْ وَلِيَ شَيْئًا مِنْ أُمُورِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَعَدَلَ فِيهِ This hadith includes every Muslim who assumes any type of authority, but acts with justice within it. So it is not confined to the presidents and the leaders, but the horizons of hope, alhamdulillah, have, have been opened up for the teachers, for the leaders of their households. For the murabun, the mashayikh, the committee members of the masajid, the head teachers, the employers, those who are just, who are fair with the authority that Allah has given them. Such people never accepted bribes. Such people never took sides based upon a person's caste or a person's gender, male or female. Such a person would not make it clear to his children that I love one more than the other. Such a person would never ever deprive his daughter or his sister from her God-given right of inheritance. And this is a rampant musibah reaping through our communities. No, they were people of justice in the authority that Allah had given them. And not only that, they will be enjoying pulpits of light as well. Pulpits... Of what? Of light, Imam Muslim narrates on the authority of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. 
that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إن المقصتين على منابر من نور الذين يعدلون في حكمهم وأهليهم وما ولوا The people of justice will be set on pulpits of light on the day of judgment. They are those people who are fair and just in their rulings and amidst their families and all of the authority Allah had given them. Category number one, the just person, the Muslim who is just in his authority. Category number two, شاب نشأ بعبادة الله. A young man who grew up in the worship of Allah. The emphasis here was not on a child, nor a senile old man, and there is good in both. But a youth, a shab, a person of adolescence who grows up on the worship of Allah. Why was he, why was she singled out? Because it is well known that this is an age when the urge, the pull to do haram is at an all-time high. The forces and the accessibility to sin, they are, they are widespread. But if this young man, this young woman, despite the strong pull towards haram and the urges they have within them, they are able to keep themselves within the limits of Islam, it means that this is a person who had taken his or her taqwa of Allah to another level. A young man who grew up in the worship of Allah. Sa'id ibn Mansur narrates in his Sunan an additional narration. He says, Shabun afna nashatahu wa shababahu fi ibadatillah. A young man who used up all of his youth and energy in the worship of Allah. Every time he had, every bit of money Allah had given him, the intelligence Allah had blessed her with, the time Allah had given him was all used in the worship of Allah ever since this person was young till the day they were wedged six feet under in their grave. Don't get me wrong, this is not a person who was infallible. This person committed sins, this person mis made mistakes. But what made this young man, this young woman different is that the moment they would commit a mistake, Instantly, they would fall broken-heartedly at the doorstep of repentance, crying in remorse and promising Allah to never return to it again. Such a young man, such a young woman, had suppressed the heat of haram. He had moved away from the heat of prohibitions. Thus Allah displays His gratitude and thanks by shading them from the heat of the Day of Judgment, Yawm Al-Qiyamah. A young man, a young woman who grows up in the worship of Allah, and this is dear brothers and sisters, a message to the parents as well, to provide for their children an Islamic upbringing so that they are able to reserve for themselves a place within the shade of Allah, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, to urge them to pray in the masjid in congregation, to urge them to take the best of friends as companions, to urge them to visit the house of Allah and attend the circles of knowledge, to urge them and to encourage them for her to wear the Islamic dress code from a young age. It's mind-boggling how we are so keen to shade our children from every type of heat in the life of this world. Yet we don't show the same amount of enthusiasm in terms of shading them from the heat of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. This is category number two, a young man who grew up in the worship of Allah. Category number three, رجل قلبه معلق في المساجد. A man whose heart is hung in the masjid. Look at the prophetic description here. Whose heart is hung to the masjid, not his body, his heart. Ibn Hajar al Asqalani he says, كأنه شبهه بالشيء المعلق في المسجد كالقنديل مثلا إشارة إلى طول الملازمة له بقلبه وإن كان جسده خارجا عنه. He said the Prophet ﷺ said that this person's heart was hung to the masjid as if it was a lantern or something like that to indicate just how long this person was in the masjid in terms of his heart even though his body was outside at times. Ah, alhamdulillah, so we understand that in order to earn this virtue, category number three, it doesn't mean that I need to be a full-time occupant of the masjid. I don't need to work in the masjid. I don't need to leave my work and my study to be in the masjid all of the time. No, this hadith is in reference to a person who harbors intense love for the house of Allah. He leaves the masjid after praying an obligatory prayer and his heart is yearning to come back. He feels like he has left his heart in the masjid. 
And every opportunity that comes back, he comes back to the masjid. But his body is outside sometimes, buying and selling and attending to the necessities of life. A man whose heart is attached to the masajid. And I tell you this, dear brothers and sisters, it is not late to amend your relationship with the house of Allah. Even if you were a person who would only visit the masjid once a week on a Friday, even if you are that person, there is still an opportunity to amend that relationship. Begin with Isha and Fajr to begin with. Two of the greatest salawat. And prayers that don't usually conflict with study or work at working hours. Begin with Isha and Fajr. And I promise you this. If you make that relationship and you amend it with the masjid, Allah Almighty will greet you with happiness. And the evidence for this is that which Ibn Khuzayman narrates in his Sahih on the authority of Abu Hurairah that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا مِن رَجُلٍ كَانَ يُوَطِّلُ الْمَسَاجِدِ فَشَغَلَهُ أَمْرٌ أَوْ عِلَّةٌ ثُمَّ عَادَ إِلَى مَا كَانُ إِلَّا تَبَشْبَشَ اللَّهُ لَهُ كَمَا يَتَبَشْبَشُ أَهْلُ الْغَائِبِ بِغَائِبِهِمْ إِذَا قَدِمْ he said, there isn't any person who used to always visit the masjid frequently, but then became busy because of a matter or illness, but then returned back to the masjid, except that Allah Almighty will greet such a person with happiness and excitement, the same way one of you greets his loved ones with happiness and excitement when they come back from journey. Ya salam. This is category number three, a person whose heart is attached to the houses of Allah. Category number four. Rajulani tahabba fillahi jitama'a alayhi wa tafarraqa alayhi. Two men who loved each other purely for the sake of Allah. It wasn't necessarily business that brought them together. It wasn't necessarily a shared ethnicity or a common culture. It may not have been the same team that they both support. It was something else that brought them together. It was the love of Allah and the eagerness for the home of the hereafter that they sensed in one another. This is what drew them and attracted them to each other. Love that was for the sake of Allah. Thus Allah will reward them and Allah will bless them. And they will be ecstatic to hear their names being called out on the day of judgment. As Imam Muslim narrates in his Sahih, that the Messenger said that Allah Almighty will say, On the day of judgment, making an announcement, Ayn al mutahabuna Bijalali. Al Yoma Uvilluhum fi Zilli. Yoma la Villa illa Zilli. Where are those who used to love each other for my sake? Allah will say. Today I will shade them with my shade on a day when there will be no shade but mine. Find that individual whom you are sure you love only for the sake of Allah and hold on to him, hold on to her and await the announcement on the Day of Judgment. And tell that person that you love them for the sake of Allah, this is a sunnah that has been overlooked and neglected. If a person loves his brother, as the Messenger says, as was narrated by Abi Dawood in his sunnah, and Imam Tirmidhi in his jami' on the authority of Al-Miqdad ibn Ma'ad Yakrib, if a person loves his brother, let him tell him he loves him. If a person loves his brother, tell him, I love you for the sake of Allah. This is category number four. Two people who loved each other purely for the sake of Allah. This is accessible. Alhamdulillah, this is accessible. And the shade of Allah is there. Category number five. رَجُلٌ دَعَتْهُمْ رَأَةٌ ذَاتُ مَنْصِبٍ وَجَمَالٍ فَقَالْ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهِ A man who was seduced by a beautiful and a high-ranking woman to do the haram with her and he walked away saying, I fear Allah. What type of piety, what type of strength, what type of imani fortitude must this individual have had to walk away from such a temptation which may have caused the vast majority of humanity to collapse at its doorstep. And thus Imam Al-Qurtubi would say about such an individual who was able to do this in his book, Al-Mufhim, he would say, وَهَذَا هُوَ الْمَقَامُ الْيُوسُفِي This is the Yusufic station. This is the Yusufic station. The station of Yusuf. As he was offered a similar invitation and he walked away, I fear Allah 
Al Qurtubi says, This is the Yusufic station. Such an individual, despite having desires within him, within her, like everybody else, but realize that the shade of Allah Almighty is more precious than a short lived moment of haram that will bring with it luggage of sadness and regret and pain. The slogan of such a young man, the slogan of such a young woman, was the ayah from the Quran that reads, Inni akhafu in asaytu rabbi adhaba yawmin azim. I fear that if I was to disobey my Lord, the punishment of a great day. That was their slogan. What type of person must this individual had been to put away such a desire? I fear Allah, a man who was invited and seduced by a woman of high rank and beauty. He walks away saying, I fear Allah, I fear Allah. What about the sixth of the seven? He is a man who gives out a charity with so much privacy and secrecy that his left hand does not know what his right is giving in sadaqah. Despite the hands being very close to one another in their creation, and despite the hands usually working in collaboration with one another when we engage in tasks, yet this person was so sincere and so secretive about his sadaqah that even his left hand had no idea what the right one was getting up to. Figurative speech, an analogy, this is an example. Allah says, إِن تُبْدُوا الصَّدَقَاتِ فَنِعَمَّا هِي وَإِن تُخْفُوهَا وَتُؤْتُوهَا الْفُقَرَاءَ فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَيُكَفِّرُ عَنْكُمْ مِنْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرٌ If you disclose your charity, if you make it public, there is good in this. But if you hide it, Allah says, if you hide your sadaqah, and you give it to those who are poor, that is even better for you, and Allah will erase some of your sins through it. Allahu Akbar. There are certain exceptions to the rule. Yes, the rule is that secrecy and privacy when giving sadaqah and doing actions of worship. But there are certain exceptions, like an individual who is of influence, an imam of a masjid, a leader of a community, the leader of a household, and he knows that when he is going to give charity, people are going to follow, it is good for him to give it in public so that they may copy him. If however you know that your intention is going to play up and you are aware of yourself and I am certainly aware of mine, then such a person resorts to the default and that is giving sadaqah in privacy. And this is, this is category number six. As for category number seven, and we will close with this. رَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ خَالِيًا فَفَاضَتْ عَيْنَهُ a person who remembers Allah Almighty when he is alone and his eyes begin spilling with tears. Should we cry, dear brothers and sisters, in public, there may be room to doubt your intention. But when you shed those tears in utmost privacy where the only influence upon those tears was the remembrance of Allah, then the indications of sincerity are far more telling. Far more telling. The secret word here in this description was not tears. The secret word was khaliyan in privacy. We can cry in public. When we see others crying, we cry. Sometimes we are crying for the wrong reasons. But when you are alone, who can now doubt your intention? Train yourself, dear brothers and sisters, to put forward as many acts of ibadah in secrecy as you can. And if you feel that the majority of your actions of worship are in fact in public, and the ones you do in private are very small, you have to really revisit your intention and your relationship with Allah. Dear brothers and sisters, it is well known that if you were to bring a peg and you were to thrust it very deep into the soil, that peg will stand strong and no wind can blow it down. Even if that peg happens to be very skinny, very thin, but because it is down in the ground, it stands firm. However, if you were to bring a very big peg, a thick and wide peg, and you were just to dump it on the ground without pushing any of it in the soil, a child could push it over, despite its size. Why? Because none of that peg has secrets. No part of that peg is in darkness. All of that peg is out in the open, thus that peg is very weak. Why do I mention this? Because the worship of secret follows the exact same rule. 
the more you worship Allah Almighty behind closed doors, away from the eyes of your wife, your husband, your children, the deeper you are thrusting your peg within the soils of Iman. And thus when the winds of fitna and tribulation come to you, you stand strong because of the reserve you have prepared for yourself at night. And for this reason, and I will conclude with this, Ibn Asakir narrates in his tarikh that a man came to the companion Hudayf ibn al-Yaman, that companion who was given by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the names of all of the hypocrites in Medina. And the man, he says to Hudayf, Ya Hudayf, am I from the hypocrites? Was I listed from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a person of nifaq? Hudayf did not give him a yes or no answer. He could have done, but he gave him a description. He said to him, أَتُصَلِّي إِذَا خَلَوْتْ وَتَسْتَغْفِرْ إِذَا أَذْنَبْتْ Are you a person who prays when he is alone? And do you ask Allah to forgive you when you commit a sin? The man says, yes, I do. Hudayfa then said to the man, اِذْهَبْ فَمَا جَعَلَكَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُنَافِقِينَ Go, proceed. Because Allah has not made you one of the hypocrites. Notice what Hudayfa said to him, do you pray when you are alone? Do you pray when you are alone? Thus, my dear brother, my dear sister, in conclusion, train, train to pray in secrecy, to fast in secrecy, to give sadaqah in secrecy, to think about the majesty of Allah and then cry in secrecy. Rather than using these opportunities, these moments of privacy to commit a sin and to log on to something haram, See those moments of privacy as a golden opportunity to reserve for yourself a place within the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are quick reflections with regards to the seven who will be shaded within or under the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah to make you and I and our families.